The Crimean Khanate Mongolian, Krimen Hanlig, Krimen Tatar, Ottoman Turkish, Kirim Hanlaji, Kurim Hanlaji, Kurim Kanli or Kurim Urtu, Kurim Urtu, Kurim Urti Russian, Krimsko Hanstvo translate. Krimskoye Hanstvo, Ukrainian, Krimsky Hanstvo, Krimsky Chanstvo, Polish, Chanit Krimsky was a Turkic vassal state of the Ottoman Empire from 1478 to 1774, the longest lived of the Turkic Khanates that succeeded the Empire of the Golden Horde of Mongol origin. Established by Hasi I. Guri in 1449, the Crimean Khans were the patrilineal descendants of Toka Timur, 13th son of Hochi and grandson of Genghis Khan through marriage. Timur married one of Genghis Khan's granddaughters. The Khanate was located in present day Russia and Ukraine. Ottoman forces under Gedik Ahmet Pasha conquered all of the Crimean Peninsula and joined it to the Khanate in 1475. During the 16th and 17th centuries, the Crimean Khanate was an important center of the slave trade. In 1774, it was released as a nationally independent state, following the Russo-Turkish Treaty of Kuchik Kynarka, and formally annexed by the Russian Empire in 1783, becoming the Torida Governorate. <laughs> Naming and geography English-speaking writers during the 18th and early 19th centuries often called the territory of the Crimean Khanate and of the Lesser Nogai Horde Little Tartary or subdivided it as Krim Tartary, also Krim Tartary and Kuban Tartary. The name, Little Tartary, distinguished the area from Great Tartary, those areas of Central and Northern Asia inhabited by Turkic peoples or Tatars. The Khanate included the Crimean Peninsula and the adjacent steppes, mostly corresponding to the parts of South Ukraine between the Dnieper and the Donetsk rivers i.e. including most of present-day Zaporizhia Oblast, left Dnepr parts of Kherson Oblast, besides minor parts of southeastern Dnipropovosk Oblast and western Donetsk Oblast. The territory controlled by the Crimean Khanate shifted throughout its existence due to the constant incursions by the Cossacks, who had lived along the Don since the disintegration of the Golden Horde in the 15th century. The London-based cartographer Herman Maul in a map of c. 1729 shows, "...little Tartary." as including the Crimean Peninsula and the steppe between Dnieper and Meuse River as far north as the Dnieper Bend and the Upper Tor River a tributary of the Donets. History Establishment The Crimean Khanate originated in the early 15th century when certain clans of the Golden Horde Empire ceased their nomadic life in the Deshti Kipchak Kipchak steppes of today's Ukraine and southern Russia and decided to make Crimea their yurt homeland. At that time, the Golden Horde of the Mongol Empire had governed the Crimean Peninsula as an ULUS since 1239, with its capital at Kurum Staryi Krim. The local separatists invited a Genghisid contender for the Golden Horde throne, Hasi Guri, to become their Khan. Hasi Guri accepted their invitation and traveled from exile in Lithuania. He warred for independence against the Horde from 1420 to 1441, in the end achieving success. But Hasi Guri then had to fight off internal rivals before he could ascend the throne of the Khanate in 1449, after which he moved its capital to Kirkur, today part of Bacesare. The Khanate included the Crimean Peninsula except the south and southwest coast and ports, controlled by the Republic of Genoa as well as the adjacent steppe. Ottoman Protectorate The sons of Hasi I Guri contended against each other to succeed him. The Ottomans intervened and installed one of the sons, Menuli I Guri, on the throne. Menli I Guri took the imperial title, Sovereign of Two Continents and Khan of Khans of Two Seas. In 1475, the Ottoman forces, under the command of Gedik Ahmet Pasha, conquered the Greek principality of Theodoro and the Genoese colonies at Sembalo, Soldaya, and Kaffa. Modern Theodosia. Thenceforth the Khanate was a protectorate of the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Sultan enjoyed veto power over the selection of new Crimean Khans. The Empire annexed the Crimean coast but recognized the legitimacy of the Khanate rule of the steppes, as the Khans were descendants of Genghis Khan. In 1475, the Ottomans imprisoned Menuli I Guri for three years for resisting the invasion. After returning from captivity in Constantinople, he accepted the suzerainty of the Ottoman Empire. 
Nevertheless, Ottoman sultans treated the Khans more as allies than subjects. The Khans continued to have a foreign policy independent from the Ottomans in the steppes of Little Tartary. The Khans continued to mint coins and use their names in Friday prayers, two important signs of sovereignty. They did not pay tribute to the Ottoman Empire, instead the Ottomans paid them in return for their services of providing skilled outriders and frontline cavalry in their campaigns. Later on, Crimea lost power in this relationship as the result of a crisis in 1523, during the reign of Menli's successor, Mehmed I Guri. He died that year and beginning with his successor, from 1524 on, Crimean Khans were appointed by the Sultan. The alliance of the Crimean Tatars and the Ottomans was comparable to the Polish-Lithuanian Union in its importance and durability. The Crimean cavalry became indispensable for the Ottomans' campaigns against Poland, Hungary, and Persia. Topic. Victory over the Golden Horde In 1502, Menuli I Guri defeated the last Khan of the Great Horde, which put an end to the Horde's claims on Crimea. The Khanate initially chose as its capital Salashik near the Kirkur fortress. Later, the capital was moved a short distance to Bachesare, founded in 1532 by Sahib I Guri. Both Salashik and the Kirkur fortress today are part of the expanded city of Bachesare. Topic. Slave trade The Crimeans frequently mounted raids into the Danubian principalities, Poland Lithuania, and Muscovy to enslave people whom they could capture. For each captive, the Khan received a fixed share of 10% or 20%. These campaigns by Crimean forces were either Seifers, sojourns, officially declared military operations led by the Khans themselves, or Kapils, despoiling. Raids undertaken by groups of noblemen, sometimes illegally because they contravened treaties concluded by the Khans with neighboring rulers. For a long time, until the early 18th century, the Khanate maintained a massive slave trade with the Ottoman Empire and the Middle East, exporting about two million slaves from Russia and Poland-Lithuania over the period 1500–1700. Kaffa city on Crimean Peninsula was one of the best known and significant trading ports and slave markets. In 1769, a last major Tatar raid resulted in the capture of 20,000 Russian and Ruthenian slaves. Author and historian Brian Glynn Williams writes Fisher estimates that in the 16th century the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth lost around 20,000 individuals a year and that from 1474 to 1694, as many as a million Commonwealth citizens were carried off into Crimean slavery. Early modern sources are full of descriptions of sufferings of Christian slaves captured by the Crimean Tatars in the course of their raids. It seems that the position and everyday conditions of a slave depended largely on his, her owner. Some slaves indeed could spend the rest of their days doing exhausting labor, as the Crimean vizier minister Sefer Ghazi Aga mentions in one of his letters, the slaves were often a plow and a scythe of their owners. Most terrible, perhaps, was the fate of those who became galley slaves, whose sufferings were poeticized in many Ukrainian Duma songs. Both female and male slaves were often used for sexual purposes. Topic. Alliances The Crimean Khanate also made alliances with the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and the Zaporizhian Sich. The assistance of Islam III Guri during the Komelnitsky uprising in 1648 contributed greatly to the initial momentum of military successes for the Cossacks. The relationship with the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was also exclusive, as it was the home dynasty of the Guris, who sought sanctuary in Lithuania in the 15th century before establishing themselves on the Crimean Peninsula. The northern hinterlands of the Khanate were coveted by Muscovy for their agricultural productivity, having longer growing seasons than Muscovy itself. Within Muscovy, the permanent warfare at the borderland and the burgeoning in size of the armies of the nobles boyars fomented intense exploitation of the peasantry. <laughs> <laughs> Struggle over Astrakhan In the middle of the 16th century, the Crimean Khanate asserted a claim to be the successor to the Golden Horde, which entailed asserting the right of rule over the Tatar Khanates of the Caspian Volga region, particularly the Kazan Khanate and Astrakhan Khanate. This claim pitted it against Muscovy for dominance in the region. 
A successful campaign by Devlet i Guri upon the Russian capital in 1571 culminated in the burning of Moscow, and he thereby gained the sobriquet, that Algon Caesar of the, throne. the following year, however, the Crimean Khanate lost access to the Volga once and for all due to its catastrophic defeat in the battle at Molodai. Topic. Decline The Turkish traveller writer Evliya Celebi mentions the impact of Cossack raids from Azak upon the territories of the Crimean Khanate. These raids ruined trade routes and severely depopulated many important regions. By the time Evliya Celebi had arrived almost all the towns he visited were affected by the Cossack raids. In fact, the only place Evliya Celebi considered safe from the Cossacks was the Ottoman fortress at Arabat. The decline of the Crimean Khanate was a consequence of the weakening of the Ottoman Empire and a change in the balance of power in Eastern Europe favoring its neighbors. Crimean Tatars often returned from Ottoman campaigns without booty, and Ottoman subsidies were less likely for unsuccessful campaigns. Tatar cavalry, without sufficient guns, suffered great loss against European and Russian armies with modern equipment. By the late 17th century, Muscovite Russia became too strong a power for Crimea to pillage and the Treaty of Karlowitz 1699 outlawed further raids. The era of great slave raids in Russia and Ukraine was over, although brigands and Nogay raiders continued their attacks and Russian hatred of the Khanate did not decrease. These polito-economic losses led in turn to erosion of the Khan's support among noble clans, and internal conflicts for power ensued. The Nogays, who provided a significant portion of the Crimean military forces, also took back their support from the Khans towards the end of the empire. In the first half of 17th century, Kalmyks formed the Kalmyk Khanate in the lower Volga and under Ayuka Khan conducted many military expeditions against the Crimean Khanate and Nogays. By becoming an important ally and later part of the Russian Empire and taking an oath to protect its southeastern borders, the Kalmyk Khanate took an active part in all Russian war campaigns in 17th and 18th centuries, providing up to 40,000 fully equipped horsemen. The United Russian and Ukrainian forces attacked the Khanate during the Chigirin campaigns and the Crimean campaigns. It was during the Russo-Turkish War, 1735–1739 that the Russians, under the command of Field Marshal Munich, finally managed to penetrate the Crimean Peninsula itself, burning and destroying everything on their way. More warfare ensued during the reign of Catherine II. The Russo-Turkish War, 1768–1774 resulted in the Treaty of kuchuk kainarji which made the Crimean Khanate independent from the Ottoman Empire and aligned it with the Russian Empire. The rule of the last Crimean Khan Sahin Guri was marked with increasing Russian influence and outbursts of violence from the Khan administration towards internal opposition. On 8 April 1783, in violation of the treaty some parts of which had been already violated by Crimeans and Ottomans, Catherine II intervened in the civil war, de facto annexing the whole peninsula as the Torida governorate. In 1787, Sahin Guri took refuge in the Ottoman Empire and was eventually executed, on roads, by the Ottoman authorities for betrayal. The royal Guri family survives to this day. Through the 1792 Treaty of Jassi Iasi, the Russian frontier was extended to the Dniester River and the takeover of Yetisan was complete. The 1812 Treaty of Bucharest transferred Bessarabia to Russian control. Government All Khans were from the Guri clan, which traced its right to rule to its descent from Genghis Khan. According to the tradition of the steppes, the ruler was legitimate only if he was of Genghisid royal descent i.e. Ak Suyak. Although the Guri dynasty was the symbol of government, the Khan actually governed with the participation of Karachi Beys, the leaders of the noble clans such as Surin, Baran, Argan, Kipkak, and in the later period, Mansurolu and Sikavut. After the collapse of the Astrakhan Khanate in 1556, an important element of the Crimean Khanate were the Nogays, who most of them transferred their allegiance from Astrakhan to Crimea. Circassians and Cossacks also occasionally played roles in Crimean politics, alternating their allegiance between the Khan and the Beys. The Nogay pastoral nomads north of the Black Sea were nominally subject to the Crimean Khan. They were divided into the following groups, Budjak from the Danube to the Dniester, Yetisan from the Dniester to the Bug, Jamboyluk Bug to Crimea, Yetikal north of Crimea and Kuban. Internal affairs 
Internally, the Khanate territory was divided among the bays, and beneath the bays were mirzas from noble families. The relationship of peasants or herdsmen to their mirzas was not feudal. They were free and the Islamic law protected them from losing their rights. Apportioned by village, the land was worked in common and taxes were assigned to the whole village. The tax was one-tenth of an agricultural product, one-twentieth of a herd animal, and a variable amount of unpaid labor. During the reforms by the last Khan Sahin Giri, the internal structure was changed following the Turkish pattern. The nobles' landholdings were proclaimed the domain of the Khan and reorganized into Kadiliks, provinces governed by representatives of the Khan. Topic: <laughs> Crimean Law. Crimean Law was based on Tatar law, Islamic law, and in limited matters, Ottoman law. The leader of the Muslim establishment was the Mufti, who was selected from among the local Muslim clergy. His major duty was neither judicial nor theological, but financial. The Mufti's administration controlled all of the Vakuf lands and their enormous revenues. Another Muslim official, appointed not by the clergy but the Ottoman Sultan, was the Kadiyaskar, the overseer of the Khanate's judicial districts, each under jurisdiction of a Qadi. In theory, Qadis answered to the Qadiyaskars, but in practice they answered to the clan leaders and the Khan. The Qadis determined the day-to-day -day legal behavior of Muslims in the Khanate. Non-Muslim minorities Substantial non-Muslim minorities, Greeks, Armenians, Crimean Goths, Odig, Circassians, Venetians, Genoese, Crimean Karet and Karimkak Jews, lived principally in the cities, mostly in separate districts or suburbs. Under the millet system, they had their own religious and judicial institutions. They were subject to extra taxes in exchange for exemption from military service, living like Crimean Tatars and speaking dialects of Crimean Tatar. Mikhail Kazilov writes. According to Marcin Branuski the Tatars seldom cultivated the soil themselves, with most of their land tilled by the Polish, Ruthenian, Russian, and Wallachian Moldavian slaves." The Jewish population was concentrated in Kufit Kale Jewish fortress, a separate town near Bacezare that was the Khan's original capital. As other minorities, they spoke a Turkic language. Crimean law granted them special financial and political rights as a reward, according to local folklore, for historic services rendered to an Ulahane first wife of a Khan. The capitation tax on Jews in Crimea was levied by the office of the Ulahane in Bacezare. The Jews in Crimea were actively involved in the slave trade. <laughs> economy The nomadic part of the Crimean Tatars and all the Nogays were cattle breeders. Crimea had important trading ports where the goods arrived via the Silk Road were exported to the Ottoman Empire and Europe. Crimean Khanate had many large, beautiful, and lively cities such as the capital Bacezare, Goslave Yepatoria, Karasu Bazaar Karasu Market and Akumsit White Mosque having numerous Hans caravanserai and merchant quarters, tanners, and mills. Many monuments constructed under the Crimean Khanate were destroyed or left in ruins after the Russian invasion. Mosques, in particular were demolished or remade into Orthodox churches. The settled Crimean Tatars were engaged in trade, agriculture, and artisanry. Crimea was a center of wine, tobacco, and fruit cultivation. Bacezare kilims oriental rugs were exported to Poland, and knives made by Crimean Tatar artisans were deemed the best by the Caucasian tribes. Crimea was also renowned for manufacture of silk and honey. The slave trade 15th -17th century in captured Ukrainians and Russians was one of the major sources of income of Crimean Tartar and Nogay nobility. In this process, known as harvesting the steppe, raiding parties would go out and capture, and then enslave the local Christian peasants living in the countryside. In spite of the dangers, Polish and Russian serfs were attracted to the freedom offered by the empty steppes of Ukraine. The slave raids entered Russian and Cossack folklore and many Dumi were written elegizing the victims' fates. This contributed to a hatred for the Khanate that transcended political or military concerns. But in fact, there were always small raids committed by both Tatars and Cossacks, in both directions. The last recorded major Crimean raid, before those in the Russo-Turkish War 1768 took place during the reign of Peter I 1682 
Topic: Crimean art and architecture. Topic: Selim II Gari Fountain. The Selim II Gari Fountain, built in 1747, is considered one of the masterpieces of Crimean Khanate's hydraulic engineering designs and is still marveled in modern times. It consists of small ceramic pipes, boxed in an underground stone tunnel, stretching back to the spring source more than 20 meters 66 feet away. It was one of the finest sources of water in Bakhchisarai. Bakhchisarai Fountain One of the notable constructors of Crimean art and architecture was Kurram Ghari, who in 1764 commissioned the fountain master Omer the Persian to construct the Bakhchisarai fountain. The Bakhchisarai fountain or fountain of tears is a real case of life imitating art. The fountain is known as the embodiment of love of one of the last Crimean Khans, Khan Kurram Ghari for his young wife, and his grief after her early death. The Khan was said to have fallen in love with a Polish girl in his harem. Despite his battle-hardened harshness, he was grievous and wept when she died, astonishing all those who knew him. He commissioned a marble fountain to be made, so that the rock would weep, like him, forever. <inaudible> Regions and administration Main regions outside of Kurum Yurt the peninsula Kastiv Ulus located in Kuban Yedichkul Horde Jumbilik Horde Yetisan Horde, Budzak Horde, Pranoinsk Palanka, possibly leased to the Zaporizhian host, located on the Kinburn Peninsula, Silistra Province, Ottoman Empire, for some time governed by Bakhchisarai. The peninsula itself was divided by the Khan's family and several bays. The estates controlled by bays were called Beylik. Bays in the Khanate were as important as the Polish magnates. Directly to the Khan belonged Kufit Kale, Bakhchisarai, and Staryi Krim. Eski Kurum. The Khan also possessed all the salt lakes and the villages around them, as well as the woods around the rivers Alma, Kacha, and Salgir. Part of his own estate included the wastelands with their newly created settlements. Part of the main Khan's estates were the lands of the Kala Sultan Kalga, who was next in the line of succession of the Khan's family. He usually administered the eastern portion of the peninsula. Kala also was chief commander of the Crimean army in the absence of the Khan. The next hereditary administrative position, called Nuruddin, was also assigned to the Khan's family. He administrated the western region of the peninsula. There also was a specifically assigned position for the Khan's mother or sister, Anna Baim, which was similar to the Ottoman's Valide Sultan. The senior wife of the Khan carried a rank of Ulu Baim and was next in importance to the Nuruddin. By the end of the Khanate regional offices of the Kaimakans, who administered smaller regions of the Crimean Khanate, were created. Or Kapi Parakop had special status. The fortress was controlled either directly by the Khan's family or by the family of Shuran. <laughs> Ottoman Empire territories Kefe Islet, a seat of Ottomans in Crimea until 1774. Silistra Islet, the western coast of Black Sea, later Danube Vilayet. Topic. See also. Topic. Ottoman Empire, 1750 to 1974. Notes. Topic. External links. The Bagkasaray Palace of the Crimean Khans. Tatar, Net. Annexation of the Crimean Khanate Topic. Further reading Ivanich, Maria 2007. Enslavement, Slave Labor, and the Treatment of Captives in the Crimean Khanate. In David, Geza, Paul Fodor. Ransom Slavery Along the Ottoman Borders Early 15th, Early 18th Centuries. Leiden, Brill pp. 193-219